before we start, just a few uh, verses from Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of the Lord makes the barren wilderness quake. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare. In this temple, everyone shouts glory. The Lord rules over the flood waters. The Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. And now if you could stand, if you're able, for our first hymn, which is um, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord Almighty.
have a short prayer before we have our word, our reading from the word. Lord Father God, we thank you that we are truly blessed to be able to read, hear and study your word in freedom and without fear of persecution. Fill your church here with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Open our hearts, minds and ears to receive your wisdom as we now turn to your precious word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And the reading is from Exodus 19. And read from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. The Lord reveals himself at Sinai. Exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Redemption, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp here, there, at the base of Mount Sinai. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the family of Jacob, announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on earth. For all the earth belongs to me, and you will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. So Moses returned from the mountain and called together the elders of the people and told them everything the Lord had commanded him. And all the people responded together. We will do everything the Lord has commanded. So Moses brought the people's answer back to the Lord. And then the Lord said to Moses, I will come to you in a thick cloud, Moses, so the people themselves can hear me when I speak with you. Then they will always trust you. Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And then the Lord told Moses, Go down and prepare the people for my arrival. Consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothing. Be sure they are ready on the third day. For on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai as all the people watch. Mark off a boundary all around the mountain and warn the people, be careful. Do not go up to the mountain or even touch its boundaries. Anyone who touches the mountain will certainly be put to death. No hand may touch a person or animal that crosses the boundary. Instead, stone them or shoot them with arrows. They must be put to death. However, when the ram's horn sounds a long blast, then the people may go up on the mountain. So Moses went to the people. He consecrated them for worship. They washed their clothes and he told them, Get ready for the third day. And until then, abstain from having sexual intercourse. On the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed, and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a loud, loud blast of the ram's horn, and all the people trembled. Moses led them out from the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. All of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. The smoke billowed into the sky like smoke from a brick kiln, and the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God thundered his reply. The Lord came down from the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses climbed the mountain. Then the Lord told Moses to go back down and warn the people not to break through the boundaries to see the Lord or they will die. Even the priests who regularly come near to the Lord must purify themselves so that the Lord does not break out and destroy them. But Lord, Moses protested, the people cannot come to Mount Sinai. You already warned us. You told us mark off the boundary around the mountain to set it apart as holy. But the Lord said, go down and bring Aaron up with you. 
In the meantime, do not let the priests or the people break through to approach the Lord, or he will break out and destroy them. So Moses went down to the people and told them what the Lord had said. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Cherie, and thank you for, for leading us into, uh, into worship this evening as well. Let's, uh, let's pray. Lord God, we're, uh, we're so aware of this reading that talks of your holy presence amongst your people. And we pray as we look at your word now that we would, uh, we would know your presence with us in this place and in this moment. Speak to us, we pray, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, um, I've got a question for you this evening. Um, what are you doing here? <laughs> what, what are you hoping to happen because you're here this evening? What do we hope for when we come together for worship? What, what's the purpose of, of gathering together like this? Perhaps you can think back to moments of worship and when we've gathered, it maybe is in here or at Christchurch or, or somewhere else, and, and the, the sense of worship has been wonderful. And you've gone away afterwards and you thought, oh, that was, oh, why? What, what is it that makes a moment like that? Because I know talking to some of you, um, some of you talk about the, the kind of atmosphere that there is when we worship, uh, kind of an experience of, of something going on when we worship together. I know some people talk about the, the fellowship of the church and actually coming together and gathering together like this. It's, it's really good to be able to share with one another, catch up on all of the news. And um, as long as the sermon doesn't go on too long, you know, you get a decent cup of coffee afterwards in the morning and you can talk for hours with, with everyone. And perhaps it's the singing, perhaps to be part of the, the, the singing that happens and the that it just, singing just does something to you, doesn't it? Um, like, like when we were singing a moment ago, it just oh, lifts your spirits. I know some people talk about um, feeling good, that you kind of go away, perhaps you can't put your finger exactly on it, but it feels good, you feel set up for the week ahead, you've got some stuff out of being here. It's a positive environment, it's an encouraging place to be. Um, perhaps some people might be here, if they wish to learn something about Exodus chapter 19 and what that's all about. Or perhaps um, even some folk might be here because you've got four and a half jobs to do. And if you weren't here, then those four and a half jobs wouldn't, wouldn't and you, you just need it. It's just, and the question is, 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 this really, is this really what God had in mind when he calls us to worship? The Bible tells us quite clearly that we're, you and I, we're made to worship God. That's why he made us. That's why he's created us, to worship and to worship him. So is this what God had in mind? Is that those kind of images of good worship? Is that, is that what he had in mind? Well, we turn to Exodus chapter 19, and lots of things in Exodus 19 seem to tell us that worship is perhaps a slightly different experience to the one that we're, we're maybe used to. Um, Anyone climbed a mountain in worship before? <laughs> um, Moses managed to do that. Um, but the, we've been journeying with these pe people for a little while, haven't we? Um, we know that God has rescued the people from Egypt out of slavery and you know, freed them from Pharaoh through the plagues. He brings them to the Red Sea. He parts the Red Sea. They walk through the Red Sea. He's promised them that they're going to make it to the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And then today, they end up in Sinai. Now, if you're going from Egypt, this Egypt, out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, um, the promised land, right, is that way. But Sinai is that way. And God brings them down to, to Sinai. God's leading them, isn't he? The pillar of cloud and fire behind them before. He's leading them and he leads them to Sinai. Well, why does he lead them to Sinai when they're supposed to be going to Israel, the promised land, that way? And 
It's really interesting because the people have been here before. Well, Moses has been here before. Because Mount Sinai is also known as Mount Horeb. It's the same mountain, the same lump of rock. There was a picture of it a moment ago on the screen. Um, here it is. Maybe it will appear again. Um, and uh, Mount Sinai um, is, uh, is right at the end of the Egyptian peninsula, going south, out of Egypt. Kind of nearly towards the Indian Ocean kind of direction. Um, right at the end of that, wilderness, 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 wilderness Mount Sinai. Um, and it's huge. It's absolutely ginormous. So I was looking at some stats this week. Um, Mount Sinai is 2,000 meters high. Um, Snowdon is 1,000 meters high. So this is twice the size of Snowdon. Okay? Who, who feels daunted thinking about climbing Snowdon? Okay. Okay. So this is twice the size of Snowdon. And Moses has been here before because this is the place where Moses met God, and God told him, go to Egypt and rescue my people. The burning bush, that's here. The burning bush happens here. And Moses says, oh, I can't do that. What will, what, how, how, what will he do? <laughs> and, and God says to him, go to Egypt and bring back my people, and they will worship me on this mountain. So on the way to the promised land, the people have got to come here to worship God, even though it seems like a bit of a roundabout kind of way, God had in mind right from the very beginning that he would rescue them out of Egypt and bring them to this point where they worship him, where they, where they bow down and recognize God for who he is. So what do we learn about worship at Mount Sinai? Well, I think that we, we see that Moses has to climb Mount Sinai three times in Exodus 19. So twice the height of Snowdon, three times, up and down, just to pass on a few messages. And I reckon he did that, what, in a week? Two weeks, maybe? Exodus 19, up and down. It's going to take a couple of days to get to the top, isn't it? And then probably about five days to get down. No, a couple of days to get back down again. And he does that three times. Um, it's quite a significant journey, isn't it? Up, up there and back down again. Um, the people end up staying here for a whole year camped at the bottom of Mount Sinai. Uh, so each time Moses goes up Mount Sinai, he learns something really important about what it means to worship God. And the first time he goes up to Mount Sinai, he's with all of the, the wonderful people, and he hears God and he says, I'm going to go up to Mount Sinai. And what does God say to Moses? The first time he gets to Mount Sinai, in chapter 19, verse uh, 3, he says, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, to that lot down there. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my commandment, then out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So Moses hears what God has to say. Two days, back down to the people, and he tells them. He tells them this, this message. You know what I did for you. You know what God's done for you in Egypt. He rescued you from Egypt. And you know where you're going to go. You're going to go to the promised land. And I'm going to make you into a treasured possession. You're going to be a holy nation. It's going to be wonderful and w amazing. But between, between what I have done and what I will do is this moment now. And did you notice what God said about this moment now? He says, that'll happen if you obey me. And it's in a moment of worship. And I think that means that when we worship God, it should be out of obedience to God. We're called to worship him. So when we come to worship, it's not about, it's not about what we get out of it. It's not about what we go home thinking, oh, well, that was a nice time. I've had a lovely time this evening. When we come to worship, it's about obeying God and saying, well, what can I give you? 
I want to I want to give you stuff. I want to I want to praise you. I want to here I am, Lord. I know everything I've got. I've come to obey you. We see a little bit of it in in some of the other professions, um, some of the professions that we know, like teachers, like nurses. If you ask a teacher or a, or a nurse, I think about their profession. Some of them will say, "Well, I get an awful lot out of it," but really. The very best teachers and the very best nurses, I think, and others similar, um, say, well, I do this for the people, for the children that I'm teaching. And I do this for the patients I'm caring for. Not because I get anything out of it, but because of what they get out of it. And it's the same with our worship. When we come to worship God, it's not so much about what we get out of it, but what we give to God in praise and adoration. So Moses comes and tells the people, you've got to obey God. You've got to obey God. And the people, they've grumbled. We've looked at some grumbling, haven't we, in the last few weeks? And we decided that that wasn't obeying God. We've recognized that the people argued. And we've thought about arguing quite a bit. And we recognize that that wasn't obeying God. And Moses comes to them now and says, now's the time to obey God. And do you know what the people say? The people in Exodus chapter 19 say, okay, we'll obey God. And maybe it's because there's a ginormous 2,000 meter mountain behind him that Moses has spent four days climbing up and down to tell them. But they say, yeah, okay, we'll obey God. Moses says, hold that thought, I'll go and tell God. <laughs> and off he goes again, up to, uh, up to the top of Mount Sinai. And on the second trip, we hear something about the purpose of worship. So Moses is about to open his mouth to God and say, the people said they're going to obey you. And before Moses gets a chance to say that, God says, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. And then there's a little sentence that says, then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. So, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking to you so that they'll trust you in, in days to come. Um, but it's interesting, isn't it, that the purpose of worship is to hear God speaking. Is to hear God speaking. Imagine, imagine you get invited to the last night of the proms. And you've got a VIP pass to the last night of the proms. You're in the Royal Albert Hall. You're, you're in a box just on the other side of the circle to the royal box. So you're, you're kind of on an eye level with the queen. Okay? You can see all of the people. What a wonderful experience it would be. The lights, the cameras. Is it Hugh Edwards that does some introductions sometimes? And all of those kind of things. A big orchestra. And the music starts. And oh, oh, it just sounds incredible. And then the choir stand up and they... Oh, brilliant. And then, and then... The organ thunders from the back. It's, oh, what a wonderful moment. They're singing. There's, everyone's happy and joyous. What a wonderful experience. And right in the very middle of it all, it's Sir Simon Rattle. He's the conductor. And, and he's... It, oh, brilliant. And then it comes towards the end of the last night of the proms. And uh, the person in charge of your VIP pass says, oh, do you know what? Do you know what? It was part of your VIP pass. Um, you get a backstage pass, actually. You've got half an hour to chat with Sir Simon Rattle about, oh, just have a conversation, just talk to him. And you go backstage and you have, you have a moment to share. What would you ask him? What would you talk about? How wonderful music is in Wales. <laughs> ah. Conversation, just imagine the conversation you would have. When you went away from the last night of the proms and you were telling it to somebody else, you might talk about the music, just like it is on the telly and the lights. And I was sitting like, but I wonder whether the thing that you would want to tell the most was what it was like to sit and chat with somebody like Simon Rattle and the conversation that you had. And he was a very nice chap, you know, he was lovely. Um, you would want to do that, wouldn't you? And, and I think when we come to worship, it's very similar. There's a whole pile of stuff going on. 
loads and loads of stuff, and some of it's brilliant. Some of it's absolutely, ma- some of it's not so great. But most of it is absolutely brilliant. But the key bit, the absolutely essential bit, the bit that we should long after, is the opportunity to hear God speaking. And that's why we look at his word every time we gather for worship. This is, this is what God has to say to us through his Holy Spirit. Uh, while Moses is up the mountain for that second time, he's told a whole pile of other stuff about how the people are to prepare themselves for the moment when they can approach God. And so Moses comes down and he says, look, God's dead impressed with the whole obeying thing. He wants to speak. We're going to do this. But you've grumbled. You've argued. You're broken, sinful people. God wants to see whether you'll obey him. And so he says, right, we're going to put, we're going to put a boundary line. Don't you, don't you cross this line here. Okay? Don't come anywhere near the mountain. Because if you come near the mountain, you're going to get too close to God. And that's just going to be... And, um, and wash your clothes. Don't let anybody go near the mountain. Not even the animals. Keep them away. Can you imagine being, being a, a shepherd in the, in the people of Israel? You've brought out all of these flocks and animals, right? And then you're told, don't let your sheep go anywhere near the mountain. What are you going to do for three days? <laughs> You're just going to do that, are you, for three days? Just keep them all away from, from this mountain as you try to obey God. On the, uh, on the third day, the second night, you go to sleep. morning of the third day you're in your tent you picturing it camping what's that like when you wake up wake up really early you're wondering where you are again and you're woken up (coughs) massive ram's horn sound. The next thing that you hear is a rumble of thunder. Mount Sinai is being covered in smoke. Absolutely terrified. Is that a good way to wake up in the morning? I, I quite like a, a little espresso and, a, and a, gentle, a gentle wake up. This is absolutely huge. Massive display of power. What, how are you feeling? Are you okay? Don't cross the line. Don't cross this line. Do you want to get any closer than that? No? As you climb out of your tent, you, uh, you, can, you can can't see the top of the mountain anymore. Okay. Moses comes to you and he says, do you know what? I'm going to go and speak with God. I'm going to go and talk to God in this place. So he goes and he talks with God on top of the mountain. And God says to Moses, you've got to keep the people away. You've got to keep the people away. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to give you lots of laws and commandments. But they have to stay away. They have to stay away. 
So Moses comes down, right? Don't get any closer than that. You must, you must keep a distance. Everything that's happening that day tells you don't get any closer than this. You cannot come any closer than this. Look how awesome and incredible your God is. This is, this is too much, okay? You cannot come any closer than this. cannot come any closer to God than this. And then one day, from amongst all the people, there is one who goes into the very presence, comes from the very presence of God. And every time Moses has said to the people, you cannot come. You cannot come. You're too sinful. You're too broken to meet with our holy, loving God. This one, his name is Jesus, says, you can come. You can come. Meet with your creator. You can come meet with our holy and incredible God. Not not because you're worthy. Not because you've done anything that means that you can approach our God. But because I'm worthy. Because I'm worthy. Because I've paid the price for your sin. Because you are forgiven and loved and freed. When the writer to the Hebrews, many centuries later, was reflecting on the Old Testament and on this wonderful image of our holy God, it came to the point when through Jesus Christ, he was able to say, approach the throne of grace boldly and with confidence through your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to worship, we obey God by worshiping. We hear what he has to say. And as we come in faith to Christ, he says, come into my presence. Come into my awesome, wonderful presence. You, you can come. You can come and meet with God. The thunder, the lightning, all those signs that have been holding you back. Jesus says, I've, I've, I've made a way. I've made a way through the cross for you to come and to rest in my presence. spend a moment in the presence of our God.
Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you that because of your wonderful sacrifice upon the cross, we can come in worship and adoration of our God, our Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, to listen to what he has to say to us as we look to obey him in our lives. And so, Holy Spirit, come and meet with us now. May we know your presence with us as we worship you. To be in your presence, to sit at your feet, where your love surrounds me and makes me my desire oh Lord this is my desire this is my desire oh Lord this is my desire in your presence not rushing away where you wish each moment here I would stay This is my desire, oh Lord, this is my desire, this is my desire. 
this is my desire, O oh Lord, this is my still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Lord God, we recognize your presence with us in this moment. We come before you just as we are, recognizing your holiness in obedience to worship you. Lord God, we long to hear from you, to hear your word just for us. Not a word for everyone here, but in the situations we find ourselves in tonight. Lord God, come and speak your loving words over us. Your gracious words, words of peace, words of welcome, words to encourage. Lord God, I lift up the folk who are here in your presence tonight. We praise you for the wonderful gift of the Lord Jesus Christ that draws us into, into this wonderful place where we open our hearts to you. We offer all that we are. So we recognize your glory in this place. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor. Crowned. How awesome is the 
sight, a radiant king of light. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. And Lord God, because we come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that you long to minister into our lives, to bring cleansing, to bring forgiveness, to bring your healing in your awesome presence, Lord God, we know that there is no work that is too hard for you. So in offering all that we are, in obedience and faith, we bring you our struggles, our worries, our anxieties, all those things that aren't right in our lives just in this moment. And it is in obedience that we lay ourselves before you. Longing for your power to work in us and through us. We come in faith. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. to cleanse and heal, to minister His grace. No work too hard for Him, in faith receive from Him. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place.
ti. sound of singing lift up his name in all the earth lift up your voice and give him glory for he is worthy to be praised Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the way in which you've met with us in this place. You've drawn us into the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father. And you are worthy of all of our praise. Amen. again we come to you for guidance teach us how to be humble in a world of impatience friendly in a world of loneliness giving in a world of poverty strong in a world of weakness meek in a world of anger faithful in a world of fear and light in a world of darkness in Jesus mighty and glorious name Amen and can we now share the grace by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. We've got a final hymn as well. Do you want to sing a final hymn? Should we sing a final hymn? Yes. yes. Um, it's a wonderful hymn that talks of, uh, talks of how and why we can come into the presence of our incredible God. And can it be that I can do that? And can it be that I can come into God's presence? Uh, I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood. Died he for me who caused his pain. Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? And um, hopefully the room's cleared enough so you can take a good lungful of air now as well. <laughs> um, so you would like to stand and, uh, and we'll sing together. <laughs> Seraph dry 
eyes to sound the depths of love divine. Tis mercy all, let earth adore, let angel minds inquire no more. Tis mercy His Father's throne above, so free, so infinite is grace, emptied Himself of all but love, and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all immense and free, for oh my God, it found out me. Tis mercy all immense and free, for oh spirit lay fast bound in sin and nature's night thine I diffused a quickening ray I woke the dungeon flamed with light my chains fell off my When forth and followed thee, my chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose when forth and followed thee. No condemnation now I dread Jesus and all in him is mine alive in him my living head and clothed in righteousness divine bold I Approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my go with God's wonderful blessing on us this night. Amen.